Well, hey everyone, Jay here. So I got another job sitting on my boring machine here. And although this is kind of a common job for me, I actually haven't seen one in a few months. So since one showed up, I might as well share it. And as what I've got today is I've got an early 302 block and the customer would like me to machine the rear main seal area to accept a one piece rear main seal. So it's a quick and easy process and let's get into it. So we're gonna start with the basics and that's just getting the block clamped down to the machine. It's a pretty simple setup, one bar with two threaded rods and we just tighten it down. I've never had a block move yet. Once I get that all cranked down, I use a mag based dial indicator usually and I dial up to the back of the block face here. It's supposed to be perpendicular to the mains but these blocks aren't as accurate as people think so just to make sure that I'm getting the best I can get, I uh, chuck up this spindle or this extension of my spindle so I can grab a dial indicator and I run the dial indicator down the side of the mains like this. Some blocks are pretty close, some blocks are quite far out so I never like to skip this step here. As you can see, we got that one bang on. Once I'm happy with what I see, I get my main cap torque down. I chuck up a little indicator in the spindle and I find the center of the bore. I'm going off the actual main housing bore. Then I throw in my boring bar and I start boring away. And I'm going for a specific OD and a depth. So I'm just sneaking up on my final dimension here. And I got one more cut left to go. I'm gonna have to increment this. Eight thousandths, which is gonna give me a 16 off the diameter. zero that'll be my stop so as the dial's not always moving I set it so I got to get quite a distance before it actually contacts and I got about 60 thou to pay attention once it touches on in here and take a quick measurement and that's the number that I'm after now I'm gonna check my depth and our depth is right where I want it to be so we got a step right here and a majority of this step is a really thin piece of material that's left over from doing the boring so is what I do is I usually just throw one of these 60 degree tools in here and I just go in there until this whole thin piece, I don't know if we can see it, it'll, it'll break off and it'll leave a nice chamfer on the step that's going to remain. Fire the machine up. I'm just going to hand feed it. So the brakes that lip off. chamfer is the remaining little step. I'm going to swap out for this tool holder because typically this tool holder only holds this tool which was ground on a 15 degree angle which is great for giving a bore like this a nice little lead. And then we just adjust it, tighten it down, and we hand feed this one as well. That should do the trick. Now even though I did a chamfer on this inside lip here, because it was a heavy cut, it does leave a little bit of a 
a rag in there. So I just take a little grinder like this with uh, one of these buffing pads. And I do a few laps like so. And that completely gets rid of that. And that's what we end up with. That's our final product. So it's pretty quick. It's simple. It's a nice little upgrade for these older blocks. Um, sometimes it's a must depending on how much they removed off the cap during line honing. And in this application, we're running a stroker crank and they usually come without the serrations in the seal area, which are angled to help pull oil in away from the seal. But when you go to a one piece rear main seal, they have them built into the seal. So, you know, it's an upgrade on a couple different aspects and it's just a nice little job for me. It's uh, quick, it's easy, and I have fun doing it. So thanks for tuning in and until next time, take care everyone.